our last speaker for today's webinar, Ms. Maria Nilda Munoz. Let me introduce Ms. Maria Nilda Munoz. Ms. Munoz has an impressive career track record with a publication list of over 100 research papers in various reputed journals, besides an envious list of awards such as Most Outstanding Alumna in Chemistry by Adamson University, Manila, and the Science Ambassador of Department of Science and Technology, Philippines. Dr. Munoz has a number of degrees to her credit from prestigious institutions like University of Chicago, Ahim University, Japan, to name just a few. She has been associated with University of Pennsylvania, University of Manitoba in Canada, the University of Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. I need to add et cetera, et cetera, pardon me, in various capacities before returning back to Philippines as Bullock scientist. Since then, she has been engaged in sharing her expertise towards the betterment of science and technology in the country in various capacities, such as advisor to St. Luke's Molecular Medicine Society, as president of Philippines Association for Laboratory Animal Science, as a managing director for Rainier's Biomedical Research Laboratory, and technical advisor to a number of universities. She is currently holding the position of scientist in residence, De La Salle University, and senior research scientist at Cagayan State University, Tugigarao, Philippines, besides serving as an advisor on many editorial boards. Over to Dr. Munoz. Her, talk, she, her topic for today's talk is academia and industry collaborations an opportunity to drive efficiency in research on natural products. Doctor. Thank you very much. Munoz. Yeah, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Dr. Siva, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Let me see if I could. Can you? We can see it. We can see it. You can make it a slideshow. Second. Okay. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. And thank you very much for that again, lovely introduction. You've heard Dr. Thomas talk about the identification of active ingredients from extracted plants. Dr. Enrique show you or talk about the new techniques on how we can screen the um, uh, extracted samples on cytotoxicity as well as the genocity. While Dr. Mubu Kumar talk about how important are the natural products for wound healing. This is very timely we talk about the academia and industry collaboration, an opportunity to drive efficiency in the search on natural products. Because we researchers have so many explored research and we have also some completed new findings, but we don't know yet what to do. And I think, and I believe that this lecture will at least tell us where the direction is. This is just my disclosure. Any views expressed in this presentation represent the personal opinions of the presenter and not those of De La Salle University, Cagayan State University, University of Perpetual Health Systems, and Rainier's Research and Development Institute. Uh, how can I remove this? I can see. Ah, oh, sorry. So the collaboration between university and industry is being increasingly emphasized in order for universities to secure access to economic resources for research in increasing demand will be placed on the benefit of research for commercial and other societal development in the short and long term. Meaning that the universities need to develop the capability of using the research knowledge 
for new products or services. When we talk about, can we remove this? How can I take this out uh, in here? So when we talk about natural products, for instance, you and me as researchers working on some food or plant extract, and you want to at least produce a food supplement. We do research and development. We do all this uh, identification and profiling of the secondary metabolites and some active ingredients. And before doing that, we also look at the uh, research related papers so that we have at least an idea what are these functions for that samples that we have in mind. After doing all this biochemical analysis, we want to test as to whether this is also gonna be working for the animal model of disease. So when you're done with in vitro, you go to in vivo and you know the target disease for which your extracted samples will be effective. Now you have novel findings and so, and that will be your additional claim. You apply for intellectual property and you perhaps you're ready for clinical trials. Clinical trials that perhaps you will have food supplement, functional food, traditional medicine, or even a utility model. Then you can have an industry partner thereafter. Let's look at first the completing values and common uh, interests between the university and industry. The common being the commercialization of new and useful technologies. As we all know, the university that is knowledge for knowledge sakes. It is a teaching university. We do research, service, and economic development. And that the university is an academic freedom, which is open disclosure. When we're talking about industry, it is they're thinking about profits, product, research, and development. They manage of knowledge for profit. And then there is this confidentiality, limited public disclosure. So you can see the conflicting values and common interests between the two. There are also different cultures <clears throat> between academics and industry. First, you have the research priorities for academic by investigator, whereas for industry, we have research priorities set by management. Grant seeking for university and profit seeking for, for industry. The academics always want publications for the, those novel findings. Industry, proprietary. We want patent for the university driven by publications and then patent driven by business decisions. Serendipity and then control. And lastly, the transfer at early stage. However, in industry, we have add value before transferring. So academic scientists have as their goals, the acquisition and dissemination of knowledge as full-time independent scholar scientists. Contrast to the industry's goal, which is always profit arising from the full-time employment of scientists. With this type of culture still existing in packets today, there will be hurdles in the collaborative space between industry and academics. So universities are vastly underutilized and potentially powerful vehicles with respect to science and technology. And we have to acknowledge that. If both universities and industries are encouraged to work actively together, universities will be able to assume new roles that could accelerate local and national development. So, why we partner with industry? Let's say all the participants are in the academy. 
may be few are with the industry. But let's take a look at why we in the academy, in the academe, would like to partner with industry. One is because there is an application of research for public good, exposure to industry collaboration, additional source of research funds, build research endowment, and then there is a reward for the inventor. Contrary to that, why partner with universities? Why do industry partner with the universities? Because research institutions are a rich source of new ideas and technology. It is also cheaper to support research and to license in technology. Biotech industry looks for academic collaborations for early stage technology. Let me just give you an example, an example of a case that happened in California. University of California, San Francisco had traditionally served as a regional medical institution for training competent doctors to serve Western USA. For years, UCSF was considered to be an unlikely place for radical inventions. The scenario started changing from 1968 when collaborative approach to fundamental research started attracting some of the brightest scientific minds to UCSF. UCSF gave the world two of its largest biotech companies, the Genentech and Chiron, and I, I know you are familiar with this. By 2003, UCSF became a world leader in biochemical research with an annual budget of 1.9 billion besides being the largest employer in San Francisco and still is. So how do we begin to bring the two cultures together in our countries? India and then Philippines and then the industries. First, employment policy. Second, policy of intellectual properties. <clears throat> Third, revenue sharing, and then inventor involvement. <clears throat> <clears throat> when we talk about employment policy, women here, employer, such as the university, college, research institute, the academy, owns all property rights to any intellectual property conceived and all reduced to practice by its employees. If the university or the academy are the ones supporting the researchers, the one giving funds, the one providing the laboratory and all supplies, then they own all property rights to any intellectual property. Assignment form, part of orientation, and then the salary, supplies, space, other resources of the university are utilized. If we talk about the policy on intellectual property, it's about the ownership of the novel findings, the transfer of ownership. Are we supposed to? Rights and obligations of faculty the rights and obligations of the university, the employer, royalty sharing, and then the waivers. Why these this new demands from the university? It is all about innovation. By innovation, there are three kinds. One, creation of knowledge and technology. Second, acquiring and adapting the technology that exists at global level. And third, spreading and making more widely available the technology that are already exists in the country. Let me show you the myth of linear model of innovation. The global myth is that innovation is a linear process. As all of us researchers, first, let's say in natural products. 
we do basic research. When we're done with all this characterization, evaluation, and testing, then we go to applied research. Maybe we have animal models of diseases or we want to do cell culture in order to whatever we found in basic research could be applied to both in vivo and in vitro models. When we are so confident that this is it, the expectation, but not anticipation, we go to development. We want to develop the product. Thereafter, we want to commercialize. The global fact is that innovation is a complex process. There are major overlaps between the basic and applied research, as well as between development and commercialization. The principal investigators, us and our patents and processes are mobile, not firm dependent. During our basic applied development and commercialization, there are so many unexpected outcomes. And then technological breakthrough might proceed as well as stem from basic research. Now let's look at other way around here, the nonlinear model of innovation. When we have the, the natural products, of course, again, from linear, we do the same thing, basic, applied development and commercialization. Here, after the clinical trial, we're not done yet. If it's already in the market, we're not done yet because there, we have to find out the feedback, meaning market signals, technical challenge is the desired project, product, alternations, or new characteristics, the cost and design trade off. Is there something wrong with the product? For instance, we have to monitor as to whether there are some adverse reaction or maybe the stability test has not been done. There are molds or microorganisms growing in our product. Then after that, we fix it, develop again, we go to apply it. Whatever we fix here, we then go back to apply it research needed, needed to design new product characteristics. At the end, the feedback, the basic research needed to, for discovery, search for new ideas and solutions to solve longer term issues. So this is going around and around until you are satisfied and then you have a very good and excellent product. So, Another thing is the here is a conceptual model of the role of university industry collaboration in a system of innovation. Issues that need to be addressed between this collaborative uh, partnership is to understand the problems, issues related to university industry collaboration in the Philippines or perhaps in India through an investigation of the factors from the literature models and evidence from other countries. Question is, can this information be conceptualized into a, into a usable model? Can behavioral aspects be embedded into a unified model? What factors motivate the individual within universities to collaborate with industry? What factors motivate universities to collaborate with industry? and what factors motivate industry to collaborate with the universities. The factors, what factors are barrier to the university industry collaboration? That's very important to find out. What changes are likely to promote more effective university and industry collaboration? And lastly, what are the roles of culture and trust in this relationship? So by creating knowledge and technology, what will be the role of the universities? To improve the technological productivity of product investment. To bridge the gap between the university and manufacturing firms through joint ventures research proposals. To generate extra resources on the basis of consulting contracts, which may also increase the overall impact of such resources. And lastly, to establish strong internship opportunities for students with industry 
So there will be a lot of exposure for industries, for students on how products could be developed from the university to marketing with the industry. How about the role of the university on the acquisition and adaptation of technology at global level? Encourage foreign staff to join the teaching universities and to promote exchanges with international academic institutions to introduce more flexible approach to foreign languages in respect to academic papers and to boost the joint participation of teachers and students through attendance of international events concerned with industry, productivity, and innovation. So you have let the students or faculty to get more exposure by attending international or even national um, conferences. The last one is the spreading and making more widely available the technology that's already exists in the country. It's to organize and participate in professional group meetings dedicated to the exchange of technology and its encouragement of joint development between the industry and the academic world. And second, to establish partnership in the sphere of basic education in order to improve education management, teaching, teacher training, assessment systems, and the overall quality of basic education. So why innovation again? As we all know, innovation is critically important for any advanced country. Now, an era of rapid revolutionary technology progress and new market, that is knowledge economy. The industry faces more civic economic conditions, just like what's happening in this COVID-19 pandemic. So new worldwide competition, we know that. More knowledgeable customers require efficiency. How efficient can, can we be? Sophisticated planning, are we in the right direction? And the, then current financial meltdown. Do we have some funding to continue or, or is there any continuity of our research to be innovated? Now, when you look again at this new model nowadays, it's simpler. The University Industry Laboratory Partnership, I included here laboratory, because both the university and the industry has to have laboratory. It could have joint research because both could hire and exchange ideas and there's also this collaboration. And then the licensing should also be in collaboration. So university, we do all this research and publications. We produce graduate students. The graduate students can also collaborate with the industry. They can work so that they can still learn more, more about how products can be marketed. And then we have all these new opportunities that will help society. All of these product services, it will help the society, the economy could be uh, much better if the university and industry joined forces. Okay, nature of demands, why? It's quicker, more flexible response by universities and laboratories to industry needs. It's more practical output from universities and laboratories like intellectual property and ventures. There is a better knowledge acquisition by companies from the universities and laboratories. Identify and develop new business ideas more rapidly if we have the university and the industry collaboration. So what do we expect as an in the academe? Technology development initiative, the methods related to process and design improvement, work towards creation of knowledge in specialized areas, multi uh, multi-dimensional of a problem 
leading to explore a variety of options to arrive at a solution which is time consuming. The university expect a time frame of an academician is governed by research guidance and teaching assignment. Academicians are oriented towards R&D activities of the industry or funds which help them to sustain their broader research interests. The industry has also needs and expectations. Large industrial houses have the resources to invest in technology, but academic participation is often needed in minor technological in innovation. There are medium and small scale industry often depend on support in the areas of design process, improvement and machinery performance, rely on process to yield a product which already exists, problem solving accounting to product testing and so on. So if this interaction, in, in its interaction with the academia, industry's expected time frames are immediate, should be right away. Investment is directed towards effort that promise result-oriented solution. What will be the benefits of the university in this collaboration? Is to earn additional resources for university's educational and research mission, severely constrained financially, to fulfill the university's service mission, to broaden the experience of students and faculty, to identify significant interesting and relevant problems to enhance regional economic and social development to increase employment opportunities for students to move results of fundamental research from laboratories to commonplace and to move discoveries from the academic institution to the marketplace and that is very important for this university and industry collaboration because only the industry will help the academic institution to the marketplace. And what will be the industry benefits? To access expertise not available in corporate laboratories, because we all know that all research are done in the university. And to aid in renewal and expansion companies' technology, sometimes they are just far behind to gain access to students as potential employees they want to hire those top notchers from the university who are very knowledgeable in r d to gain access to students to use the university as a means of facilitating the expansion of external contracts for the industry laboratory because usually in the university we have complete facility for r d to expand pre-competitive research, both with universities and with other companies, to leverage internal research capabilities, and to grow its business by using the results of the academia. Ways ahead, if there's a true collaboration and collaborative efforts between universities, laboratories, and industries, provide the greatest potential contribution towards realizing the educational goals in a specific field and meeting industry expectation for the benefit of the nation at large. Let me just show you something and this is the take home message here. So from the basic research to apply to R&D and to commercialization, here we are. Sometimes researchers, we researchers, kiss the frogs. When we have our novel findings, data, we just keep that to a secret cabinet because sometimes or mostly researchers are very secretive. If you find novel findings, you don't want to expose, you just keep it yourself. And here's a nice cabinet to store the data. But still, researchers after more development, research and development and finding more data, 
they still store the data in a cabinet until that frag becomes bigger and bigger in the stored cabinet. But you have to think, we researchers, although we are kissing the frog, this frog can turn into a prince, meaning if we partner with the industry, the industry will help us market the product, and this could turn into us as rich and famous scientists or researchers. So when you talk about between academia and industry, all your findings, novel findings, all your data, don't do this to them. Say so you won't read my technical reports. They don't understand much perhaps. So I summarize it in this complicated slide. But then the industry said, is the triangle thing mod attitude? The reason is that they just cannot communicate with a scientist or researcher if you are still very secretive. If you are transparent with them and you're ready to commercialize your product, of course you have this um, memorandum of agreement between the university, the researcher, and also with the industry, and that will be safer. So with this, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference. I really enjoy it. And hopefully we researchers from the Philippines can collaborate with the researchers from KITS. Thank you very much and have a good day to all. Thank you so much, Ms. Nilda Munoz. Thank you so much for such an important, such an important topic for all of us. So I hope and pray that the frogs of all the participants of this symposium can quickly turn into handsome prince very soon. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, I have uh, already, I have some questions for you. So the first question comes from Shraddha Mahendra uh, from Novogen Biologicals Private Limited. And her question is, why academics and academicians are not able to translate their research findings by effective collaboration with industry? Is it a transparency issue between academia and industry? Actually, it's not the transparency. The having a collaboration with the industry is, is just a uh, mere communication between the two, that there will be the such so-called non-disclosure, non-circumvent agreement between the two. So whatever you're telling, the industry, it has to be between the two to collaborate until you have the memorandum of agreement and then that product is ready for commercialization. You also have to talk about the sharing, which is very important. Of course, the, the intellectual property is always the property of the university. You own that, the university owns that, but not the industry. So the industry will help you how to market it. The industry will help you the production of your, the, the formulation of your product. We, the researchers, are, we work and we find good data to justify that this is a good product to produce, let's say for now, food supplement, or then later on, if we have the clinical trials, then it could turn into herbal medicine. So it's just communication. We don't know what the, the industry have in their mind, but we have to be really um, transparent, could be, but not all until you are so sure that you have this signed agreement with the, with the industry. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Nilda, we have another question from Mr. Lodio Pasquale from St. Jude Catholic School, Philippines. Uh, he says, it's best to have collaboration between the academy and the industry. All the support that we can get from both. Uh, I would just like to ask if the students have successfully created a product suitable to release in the market, will they get the patent or will it be patented to the industry? As I said earlier, the intellectual property is for the university because the university support us. We use the laboratory facility, we use the supplies, and we use their money. But then, for the patent, it could be shared if you have students doing it, the students should own the patent. The students should own because they are the ones who found and created this product or whatever technology they have. They own it. And if they're, sometimes if they're nice, they can share that with the university. Even the profit sharing, they can always share that with the university. There is this 30% um, for the university and then 70% for the inventor. It depends. It depends. So it's always you talk with the university or you talk with the industry. But remember, the industry will help you market the product. Uh, another follow-up question, uh, Ms. Munoz. Uh, the question is again from Shraddha Mahendra, who's asking, can we patent our novel findings first, then publish, and afterwards collaborate with industry? Okay. When you're thinking about patenting your technology or um, whatever you found in your research, you have to patent it first prior to submitting an abstract for presentation or paper for publication. It's very important. There should be no exposure of your findings or what your product before anything else. If you, let's say, you're so excited that you submit an abstract, that is the end of your patent. So make sure that if it's really patentable, then you ought to patent it right away. Now it, it is accessible in the internet. You can apply in the internet with minimal fee. So they can hold you for that and you own that patent before once you apply, then you got reply from the uh, FDA or the IPO, I mean, then you could submit an abstract. You could produce your paper. You can go to national or international meetings. You can talk about that to other people, but then you have to be very careful because sometimes I would say, don't trust too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one last question, which I'm trying to squeeze in because we are now almost coming to an end. So this is uh, Kevin Tan from DLSU Manila. And the question that he's asking is, how can biases in research outcomes as introduced by the partner company be prevented or addressed? A very relevant question, actually. Hello, hello. Because, hello, can you hear me? Dr. Munoz, can you hear me? Can you, can you repeat, please? Uh, it's kinda... Okay, uh, uh, we have question from Kevin Tan from the LSU Manila. His question is, how can biases in research outcomes as introduced by the partner company be prevented or addressed? So this is a very relevant question because we often see that uh, when you have funding for the research from the industry, then we get more for, for applied research. We do not get uh, too much funding for basic research. So this is, this is really an issue of biases. Your opinion, Ms. Munoz. 
for funding issue when you do research. Mostly researchers are getting funds from the uh, government agency. And sometimes you have your own internal funding, right? Um, there's always this kind of agreement before the start of the uh, uh, research. Um, biases to do this might not be really an issue until you see all this agreement that is issued by the university and others. I cannot really tell how much biases that they're gonna have for this um, because sometimes it, there's always changes in the participation of research. The, when the funding is provided by the government agency, Okay. They don't actually, it, mat it doesn't matter. They don't, they just give the money and you're, it's all for you. It's different when the university is giving the students the money. It's different. So you have to be, you have to have a clear understanding between the university who's giving you funding and also from the agency. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Munoz. We have more questions for you, but now we, uh, we do not uh, have so much time because uh, we have only 10 minutes for Q&A session. So we are going to direct those questions to you, uh, the participants who have asked, and uh, perhaps you can answer them through email or other means. So thank you once again, Ms. Munoz, to speak upon a very, very relevant uh, topic, which uh, is uh, important for all the researchers and the academicians.